Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bar a question was asked about the meaning of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the believers may detest jihad fi sabilillah or that they may have something in them within themselves regarding the concept of fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Kutiba alaykum al-kital wa huwa karran lakum. Wa asa an taqrahu shayin wa huwa khayran lakum. Wa asa an tuhibbu shayin wa huwa sharran lakum. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Kitab al Kareem in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, Jihad is ordained for you, though you dislike it. And it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you, and that you like a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows, but you do not know. So in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers and saying that this is something that you may detest, you may dislike as believer. Bin Uthaymeen mentions, also Imam Sa'di mentions something similar in his tafsir of this ayah. So we're going to read what Bin Uthaymeen says here to give us a good uh, tasawwur or a good picture of this issue of why the believer would dislike something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. And Bin Uthaymeen, he breaks this mas'ala into two parts, which is so important for us to understand for many things in Islam. For example, regarding women in polygamy. To understand there's a difference between the action of a woman's jealousy, her natural jealousy, and dislike to share her husband with another woman, compared to disliking or, uh, you know, in relation to disliking the actual legislated act of polygamy. So there's a difference in this mesala, as the ulama mentioned. But un unfortunately, ahl bidah they don't look at and distinguish these, these concepts. And that for them, when they look at the issue of jihad fi sibililah, they have one understanding. And for them, it is only a mesala or an issue in and of itself, that is, that they want. For example, if we look at the many, the Tekfiri groups like Daesh, which have been physically generally defeated, although they will continue these evil groups because the Prophet ﷺ let us know, the al Khawarij Kilab and Nara, the dogs of the hellfire, that they would still continue throughout time. So they will manifest themselves, as we saw Al-Qaeda and many other groups, and prior to them, they will still come throughout history. And there's still many people who are infected with this disease, who just love killing and love conflict and love chaos with no vision and no concept of what it means to practice all of Islam and that jihad is an act of ibadah, which is azim, However, it's an act and it's a wasila, it's a means, but in and of itself is not something that you just do it, just, just doing it, but rather it has a purpose. And it is to, as the Prophet wasallam said in a authentic hadith, من قاتل لتكون كلمة الله هي علية فهو في سبيل الله عز وجل. So the Prophet wasallam said, whoever uh, fights, in the cause of Allah to raise the kalimat Allah to make it uliya, to make it the most high, then this is fi sabilillah. Because he mentioned in the beginning of the hadith that, you know, a person came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayya jihad fi sabilillah. You know, or he said, he mentioned, he asked, he said, a rajulun yuqatilu hamiyatin yuqatilu uh, shaja'in so a man, a sahabi, he came to the Prophet and he asked the Messenger of Allah about jihad. You know, which one is jihad? Is it the man who's just brave and who, who, who likes to fight for bravery? Is it the one who wants to show off? He wants to be 
uh, known to the people? Or is it the one who just has that, that, uh, the not just courage but he he has an uh, excitement he loves uh conflict and he loves these things which one of those is peace be denied and then the prophet said so let us know that this is an act of ibadah that is, there is a means and all throughout the shahr we see that there's a means it's not a means of chaos it's not a means just to spill blood and it's not a chaotic venture as we see many of the takfiri uh deviant groups who only wish bloodshed around the world and they want people to do individual uh, acts of terrorism in the name of their wicked cause. They, in fact, are fighting Fisabili Shaitan. They are fighting for the devil, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look at the meaning of this, uh, this very important mas'ala that uh, one of our brothers brought up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it is disliked by you. This is jihad fisi billah. How could this be disliked by a believer when all of these ayat and all of these hadith show that this is a, a great act of ibadah if done behind the Muslim ruler in accordance with the dawabit in the criterion and the shurut of jihad, which is uh, an act of ibadah. All legislated acts of worship they have conditions that need to be fulfilled it's not just you know according to our desires and according to our uh our whims so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wuhuwa karun lukum, that it is disliked by you bin mean he mentions about this uh uh ibarah or this statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, وَلَيْسَ يُعُولَ عَلَى كِتَابَ Meaning, this, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huwa, which is a dhamir, which in English we say it's a pronoun. It, meaning it. This pronoun does not refer, because if we translate it, وَهُوَ كَرُنْ لُكُمْ It is, and it is uh, disliked by you. So if we say it is disliked by you in this, uh, Ayah, where does the it return to? Where does this the mir? Where does this pronoun go back to? It goes back to the uh, not the issue of uh, of the obligation of the duty to uh, fight fi sabilillah, but it goes back uh, to or it doesn't go back to the obligation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this an uh, obligatory duty. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's, it's uh, a duty upon you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many other ayats, uh, Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you in order that you will تتقون, in order that you will have God fearfulness. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Kitab. You know, uh, fighting is prescribed for you, and jihad is prescribed for you under the right conditions. So this prescription, this uh, pronoun is not going to the prescription, not to the obligatory duty that you dislike, but to the uh, uh, kitab, to fighting. So then Ben Othamin, he mentions, يُعُود al kitab, وَلَيْسَ يُعُود al kitab. So he says that verily the Muslims, they do not dislike what Allah has legislated for them. Because that would negate your Islam. So the Muslims do not detest what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed. Allah has prescribed for us to pray five times a day. We don't hate that. It may be difficult to get up. It may be difficult to make it to the masjid or to pray in the time for some people. And it may be difficult to use cold water and stuff. That's some mashakka. That is some, some difficulty. And the reward is increased for enduring that difficulty. Likewise, in this legislated act, uh, action, it is prescribed for you. So the Muslims don't hate the prescription that Allah has commanded you to fast, commanded you to jihad, commanded you to pray, for example. Kitab bi 
tabi'a, tabi'a, tabi'a al-bashariya. Rather, they dislike fighting because it is the human nature. It is human nature to dislike conflict. There are some people who grew up getting beat up, so they enjoy conflict. Or grew up fighting and being a bully, they might enjoy conflict. There are fighters. We know the warriors in the MMA field and stuff like this. They enjoy that, but still, you could probably ask any of them. They feel nervous during a fight. They feel because it's their, their, their innate nature. And then if they begin to lose and take blows, they're not loving getting their nose smashed and getting their forehead cracked open and blood pouring from their nose and their mouth. That's not something enjoyable or a bone being broken. That's not what people enjoy. That's your tabia. It's your tabia. It's your nature to dislike that. And Ben Othamin, he mentions, وَفَرَقَ بَيْنَ أَنْ يُقَالْ إِنَّنَا نَقْرَهُ مَا فَرَضَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَبَيْنَ أَنْ يُقَالْ إِنَّنَا نَقْرَهُ الْكِتَابِ So he says that there's a difference between disliking the duty of jihad being prescribed for you and disliking uh, fighting. He said there's a difference. And we know that from human experience. And according to the Shirk, he says, Disliking conflict and disliking fighting and disliking being harmed and harming people, it's an innate, natural thing. And without going into a whole lot of details and giving you more of the Arabic, just to simplify what the Sheikh uh, is saying here from, from what he's saying in the text and what Imam Sa'di and what we could go back to the Mufassirin about this is that when you are the dislike to dislike to leave your family, when you're called for a duty like that, you know, human beings, we have lives. People have jobs, they have livelihood, they have aspirations, you know, goals, they have family, okay? To, to, to not, to go in a situation where you're no longer the chances are you're no longer going to see your mother. And if you have children, for those who especially have young children, to, 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 to know that you have to separate from that bond that they look forward. Abby, they love you. They kiss you and they, you, you love and enjoy them. And to be able to, to, to go away from them. You don't like that. Going to work can be difficult sometimes with some of the children. They're so attached. So to leave all of those things, this is a natural thing that you dislike. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the last part of the ayat, he said, But rather, uh, it is perhaps you may dislike something, but it is better for you. So that when it's legislated, when it is in accordance with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa with the conditions of a Muslim leader and all the other conditions for it, then doing that only for the sake of Allah, not because you want to be famous, not because you want, you have bravery and you just want to show off and you want to be uh, distinguish yourself in this issue, not because you just enjoy hurting people or aggression or because you have your own mental problems and you like harming people and human beings. No are not because you are infected by the ideology that Shabab has, Al-Qaeda has, Boko Haram has, uh, Daesh has, and all these other wicked groups that fight for the sake of the devil and change it and say that it's in the name of Allah Azzawajal. No, not for those reasons, but strictly only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only because, oh, now the ulama of Ahl Sunnah have looked at this issue and we have an imam and the imam and it's legislated, then lillah, I will go. And you leave that. You leave the family, you leave everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. But not to do evil and spread wicked. You've seen fil art, causing wickedness and shayateenism, devilism, devilishness around the earth. No, that's not what jihad is. That's not what Islam calls us to. And that goes against the maqasid al -shara. It goes against the objective of the sharia. So it's very important that we 
understand this concept, and I hope that that gives some clarification for our brother, and I ask the law, Isa Wajo, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was sure, surely from me, myself, and the shaitan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad.